Uh, good evening, everyone. This is Shannon Rutherford, the town planner for Farmington. <laughs> We're going to get uh, started this evening for a with a roll call of the commission members in attendance, and then um, I will hand it over to the chair to start the meeting. So, uh, commission members, roll call, first please. Uh, Patrick Carrier. Here. Mike Grabulis. Here. Scott Halstead. Here. Matt Hot Wagner. Here. Liz Sanford. Here. Uh, Inez St. James. Here. James Ratcliffe. Here. And Mike Walsh. And I don't believe <clears throat> Mike is on at the moment. So, so we're, we'll proceed okay. without okay, Mike sure. Walsh this evening. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. This is Inez St. James. Welcome to Town of Farmington Town Plan and Zoning Commission meeting. Uh, today is March 7th, 7 p.m. We do not have any uh, public hearings this evening. So Scott, you are off the hook tonight. Sounds good, I can handle that. <laughs> All right, sounds good, thank you. All right, uh, we definitely um, have a chock full of items for new business. Let's start with Midpoint, which is a continuation uh, from last meeting. Um, Shannon, does it make sense to go through the questions or which way we're going to run? Well, I was going to, if you're in agreement, was going to turn it over to the applicant, see if the applicant, because there were some staff, uh, sorry, there were some commissioner questions mm -hmm. so that were included in the agenda review. And there were a few things that were left for them to address. Okay. Um, so I was going to turn it over to them and then we can perhaps roll through all the commission members to make sure there aren't any further questions and then that take works. it from there. That okay. works, thank you. Uh, attorney, so Phil, I can see that you're logged on as attendee. I'm trying to promote you to panelist. You need to accept the promotion of panelist and then you'll be permitted to, to participate fully in the meeting. There we go. And a, a attorney Alter, will, will you be starting for yes. midpoint yes. this evening? Yes, I will. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, for the record, my name is Peter Alter, A-L-T-E-R. I'm a lawyer. I practice law in Glastonbury, the firm of Alter and Pearson. In addition to uh, my discussion of some items tonight, uh, both Mr. Scott and Mr. Kaud are, are available. Phil Doyle, who's just been promoted, is available along with Todd Clark and Quasi Brown, uh, all of whom presented information uh, at the last uh, session of the commission where uh, the applicant's team made a very detailed and comprehensive presentation of all aspects of uh, the plan that uh, is displayed uh, for the commission. Uh, we do believe that we've demonstrated that the proposal made meets all of the purposes and zoning requirements of the Midpoint Development District and your underlying zoning regulations. The commission continued uh, its consideration of the site plan approval from its last meeting in order to review the material submitted and also to seek clarification or greater details uh, on some particular items. Uh, part of our presentation at the last meeting was to confirm that the plan presented to you for site plan approval is consistent with the master plan and special permit that has previously been approved by the commission. Um, our team has had the opportunity to review uh, the questions and responses from uh, Shannon and other town staff. And, and so uh, what I'd like to do is, is with reference to that memo dated March 1, I'll give you the applicant's perspective on these items and uh, then perhaps we can answer any final questions that you might have. Um, for the most part, what you're gonna hear me say is that we agree uh, and concur with the staff response to uh, the matters raised uh, in the memo. 
for those that are areas where additional information is needed, uh, we will try to provide it. As for uh, the first few items, which were items for consideration, uh, we are in agreement with items one and two uh, that Shannon listed. And uh, with respect to item three, as to the clubhouse, um, that will be under the control of the residential management company. It will have normal hours of operation for a facility like that, and it will not be available for outside social events or late night events, so that it will be really an amenity for those people who reside uh, in the residential component of the development. As for the comments and questions that were forwarded to Shannon uh, after our last meeting, uh, again, as I indicated, we are principally in agreement with her responses. Um, and I'll just run through these uh, very briefly. We are in agreement with the response as to items one and two that were listed above. With respect to uh, the item two, we concur with the staff response. Item three, we concur. Item four was a question as to the unit breakdown. Uh, just to recap what we presented at the last uh, hearing, there will be 22 residential units within the mixed use commercial area, uh, which is to the westerly side of uh, the development is shown on the plan, and 177 units in the residential area, which principally uh, faces the river frontage uh, in the center of the project. Um, breakdown as to mix, uh, these are only approximate numbers. We do not have final floor plans for each uh, particular unit, but we are uh, projecting that there will be 94 one bedroom and 105 two bedroom units as an approximation of what we expect um, the final unit count and mix will be. Uh, item five was a question on parking. Uh, the short answer to the question, will there be visitor parking is yes. Uh, there is uh, ample provision for visitor parking in the commercial residential mixed use area. Uh, Phil Doyle calculated that there would be 234 spaces required and 240 are provided. The bank, which is uh, that area furthest to the east, uh, standing alone um, as indicated requires 10 spaces and is provided with 10 parking spaces. And then the residential component, the, the seven buildings that are aligned along the riverfront, um, your regulation requires 1.25 parking spaces per unit. That would require 221 spaces. 237 spaces are provided. In addition to those 237 spaces, there are 12 spaces allocated to the clubhouse and there will be 84 indoor parking spaces available uh, for residents uh, to uh, rent and utilize. So all of the required parking needs are met and adequate provision has been made for visitor parking as well. No rooftop units are proposed for the seven residential buildings. And uh, it may be necessary to have rooftop units on buildings uh, F and G, part of the commercial uh, mixed use part portion of the property. Uh, and also it may be necessary on the McCollum structure as well. If in fact it turns out that those are necessary, we will uh, propose adequate screening so that the units uh, will be well, well screened from view. At the moment, uh, there is no plan to provide rooftop units. Number seven um, is an item we concur with the staff response. Number eight, 
uh, is a, a discussion of, uh, or questions about the bike shop. Um, we wanna be clear that we all agree, the developer agrees with, with, with town staff and with the commission that a bike shop would be a very de desirable amenity and business for the mixed use complex. And um, we will seek to secure a tenant for the 1200 square foot building that we anticipate would be the bike shop. However, we can't guarantee that that's the tenant that will make itself available to occupy that space. Um, so we don't want somebody to think that there, there is automatically going to be a bike shop in the development. We will make every effort to secure a bike shop tenant, but uh, we don't want anybody to be misled. The developer will commit to putting an outside seasonal uh, water spigot uh, on the outside of that building, no matter what uh, tenant occupies it. And, and we have no problem making that commitment. Um, the 1200 square foot building will need one handicap accessible bathroom, but uh, we, we can't dictate to the tenant that that become, for example, a public restroom. Um, the tenant will have to decide what use to make of uh, the bathroom that services that building. Um, so we also can't commit to providing a public bathroom uh, there. Um, the ninth item, we concur uh, with the staff response. Tenth item with respect to signage, uh, we agree that that will be by way of a separate permit process. Number 11, we concur with the staff. Number 12, lighting, uh, the indication is it complies with all regulations. We agree that it does. Uh, items 13 and 14, this has to do with the development of the access to uh, the bike path and uh, the construction that will be necessary to develop it. We had, we spent a great deal of time at our last meeting describing how uh, that site contours will be changed. The pa bike path contours will need to be changed so that it can be accessible. And I think everyone will recall the picture of the Canton ramp that everyone agrees is much too steep in order to achieve a 5% grade um, uh, necessary excavation uh, and redevelopment will occur. Uh, the developers have consulted with two experienced reputable site contractors and the estimate from both of them to complete the work is approximately two months. Obviously we are uh, dependent on several uh, aspects. One is that we need approval from uh, the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. Obviously weather is a factor and the time of year when the construction is to be undertaken is also uh, a factor. Uh, the rest of the comments by staff are on point and, and, and we agree with those. Um, number 15, we concur with the staff response. Number 16, lot coverage was uh, the question there, uh, as concluded, we meet the regulation. The further question is whether or not we would be able to use recycled pavement. Uh, we agree that that's often desirable, but uh, we also from experience know that it's completely, its availability is completely dependent on uh, whether or not other projects are underway in the area that make the material available and further that it has to be of a proper quality and quantity uh, to make use of it. If all of those factors come uh, together, then certainly uh, this developer would make use of recycled uh, pavement materials. The um, number 17, uh, we concur with the staff response and would also remind the commission that with respect to the traffic uh, on Route 4, which as we all recognize is state highway, given the scope of this project and the fact that we are dealing with a state highway, uh, if approved locally, this development would then undergo 
an OSTA review process as well. So there's additional uh, review at the DOT level in addition to uh, the information that's already been provided to the commission. Um, Number 18, we, we concur with the staff response. This is the item as to whether or not there's gonna be a conflict because of other construction activities along Route 4. And certainly developers have every intention of working with town staff uh, as noted in the staff comments. Uh, your next question was uh, about the developers. Um, as, as many of you recognize this project has really been in development for about four years. Um, Jeff Scott has, has worked diligently with economic development director and town staff to bring this project forward in the, in the character and content that you see uh, on the plan that's shown. With respect to Mr. Kaud, he's been a developer of real estate since 1968. He's developed both commercial and, and mixed use uh, projects. Most recently, he uh, developed a very successful mixed use project in, uh, on South Main Street in West Hartford. He redeveloped the Masonic Temple building, converted it into first story retail use, as well as four stories of luxury apartments above it and uh, two levels of underground parking. So his experience is both long and current in terms of uh, the challenges of developing both a mixed use project and uh, an apartment complex as proposed here. We concur with uh, item 20 in the staff response. Uh, we also concur with uh, the conclusion regarding Little League parking, in item 21. Items 22 and 23 are really incorporated in the first two items under considerations uh, that were mentioned right at the beginning. And uh, again, item 24 is an item that we, we concur with. So uh, we think that staff did a, an excellent job in providing the commission with information. We've uh, created some additional information this evening, Phil Doyle and, and uh, our architect and traffic uh, engineer are all available if you have specific questions. But uh, from our point of view, what you have before you now is a project for which all required Farmington approvals are in place. It meets all the requirements of the MDD and Farmington zoning regulations. It's consistent with the plan of conservation and development as amended in 2018. And specifically this site is discussed uh, in chapter nine of that plan. It's consistent with the master plan and special permit that this commission previously approved. And so uh, we would ask that the commission uh, approve the site plan application as presented subject to uh, suggested conditions that uh, Shannon put forward in her memo. Uh, and as I indicated, uh, all of us are happy to respond to any questions that the commission might have. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, commissioners, let's go through uh, everyone and um, capture questions and, um, and hopefully we'll take a vote on this uh, project this evening. Patrick, you are first. Yeah, no, I have no questions. I read through all the material and, and I'm satisfied. No questions. Thank you. Mike Rabulis. I have no questions, thank you. Thank you. Scott Holstead. Uh, no questions from me as well. All right, thank you. Matt Wagner. Uh, I should stick to first names. <laughs> that's okay, and that's no additional questions from me. All right, and uh, Liz? Uh, no additional questions. Did a good job answering everything. All right, and now uh, James? Let's keep the ball rolling. No questions. All right, and then uh, Mike did not join us, correct? I'm checking my mm -hmm. wall. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing him at the moment, I'm sure. No. Okay. Uh, 
just a couple of things that uh, uh, the attorney just went through. Um, going back to the clubhouse, so uh, what? what is, I, I'm not sure if I got it. So it's not gonna be a uh, limit. So, okay, so it's for use to uh, the residents, right? Uh, yeah. And it's gonna follow the Farmington's town ordinances or like, I got a little confused with the, is it up to the management company? I hope it, not, it, right? The, the management company will establish normal hours of operation. The pool open at some hour in the morning and it usually in, in a pool in a residential setting like this, uh, the pool and clubhouse will uh, usually wind down uh, somewhere around eight or nine o'clock at night at the latest, um, unless there's a, an event going on that the residents are attending. Um, and even with that, there'll be uh, a strict hours enforced because uh, there will be any number of people who are not attending the clubhouse activities and live nearby uh, and all of those residents have to be considered. So that will be uh, pretty carefully controlled by the management company. You need to see that? Or... Oh. No, we're good. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. All right. Uh, let's see here. So um, the bike shop. So we're getting the space for it, but I'm, I'm personally a little disappointed that it may we may not have someone uh, to operate it. I, you know, I understand... Um, this is a gift. And I think this parcel is very special as it will give us access to the bike path, us, the residents. Um, you know, my opinion is it, it should be open, not all, you know, 24 seven, but it should be open a little bit every day for people to use. And possibly if they have an emergency to use the facility uh, restroom. And um, I, I, I'm just disappointed. Maybe it's, maybe I'm not reading it right that we're getting the space, but when and how it's going to be, uh, you know, who's gonna run it and what kind of commitment you're gonna get from the vendors, TBD. So like to me, I'm thinking never. Well, uh, we, we certainly hope not. Um, the, the space is building, being built in anticipation that that's the purpose it will serve, but uh, Finding a tenant, finding a qualified tenant, somebody who has the ability to run a bike shop and uh, the wherewithal to do that is something that frankly can't occur until the building exists and the bike path exists. Um, it, it would not be possible, even if we had someone who said, yeah, I'm ready to run that bike shop, that even now there's no guarantee that that person will be ready to operate that business. What I can say to you is, and we've had this discussion among our group, is that we agree that it's the perfect opportunity for someone in that business to have access to the bike trail and to be able to provide those services. We think it's a perfect use for that space. What we can't do is manufacture a tenant uh, until we can show someone the space and the access to the bike trail, um, the likelihood that someone will make a commitment there at this stage is pretty unlikely. In fact, it is completely unlikely. So all I can say to you is that we are committed to seeking that person as uh, the most desirable tenant. Um, if there's someone in Farmington who has a opportunity, business opportunity like this and sees it, that would be great. There are other bike shops that, that might be interested in running this as part of their operation, but it's impossible to pursue them, market to them uh, until we have all of this approved, including the DEP approval of the access and, and changes to the bike path. Those are all things that we can't secure until we have local approval. I understand. Um, so you did mention that there will be a uh, seasonal water spigot and uh, will there be a bike pump available or that's inside? Um, I missed that part of the air pump. <clears throat> we had talked about yeah. that. Yeah. 
the, uh, the, Peter, ahead, can I can yeah. I jump in? This Phil. is Phil Doyle. Um, we discussed that with uh, ADRC, and um, I think we would like to provide that. I, mm -hmm. I know uh, the property owner uh, Jeff uh, Scott is with me, and he's indicating uh, yes. That was something uh, we've all been very enthusiastic about it, and and we would like to have be able to provide that. Okay, thank you. And uh, my last question is, um, sorry to bring it up again, is the trail, the two months um, of work, does that mean no usage at all of the trail or will, is that gonna, um, or you think there'll be portion of the time that it's, you don't think, Shannon? Well, I'll look okay. them, but I'm- No usage at all? I don't believe there'll be okay. able to be usage of it, but I, Maybe it's too early to uh, even. Uh, Attorney Alter, Mr. Doyle, if you want to comment on that, but I don't, I don't believe there's a way to do this work and still allow any type of partial access in a safe manner, that it'll come down and be completely offline until it's repaved. Because uh, there's railing, there's other things. It's, it's about having all the railing and everything up and, and having a safe passage. It's really a safety issue. Um, because of the, the changing, changing grades and the two access points that have to be constructed, um, that's a lot of activity in a relatively small area. There's really no way to create any opportunity to bypass because of the grades that exist there. So I, I'm, regrettably, it will be inaccessible for, for that period of time. Thank you. And uh, Sh Shannon, you are... Uh... The parking numbers, wait, did they seem right to you? I, it, yes, okay. they do. I don't, right. I don't have any concern with okay. the total quantity. Um, it okay. was just, again, for us from a staff standpoint, which is a little different, it's just getting a, a consolidated chart on the, the plan. But okay. I think from a total parking quantity, particularly, um, in a, a turning altar, can you, Clarify for me, because I know you said there's, uh, for the residential, there's 237 parking provided. And in addition, there's the 84 garage spaces. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Wow. So there's, it sounds like a lot. Plenty. Okay. Right. There's, there's plenty for visitors and whatever, you know, on the weekend when folks are, or, or a holiday, mm -hmm. right? And you're having some family over there. There should be plenty. There should not be an issue. Okay. Sounds good. All right, commissioners, any other questions? Last minute questions? Okay, so uh, it sounds like we're ready uh, to vote on this matter. I need a motion and a second for the approval of the site plan application for this uh, development. Okay, yeah, Patrick Carrier. Um, I make a motion to approve JRF Management LLC and Kuaud Real Estate Development LLC site plan application for mixed use development at one at 1349 1371 Farmington Avenue lots 8218 8237 Farmington Avenue um, 8560 New Britain Avenue and 8794 Sequestrian Road on the southerly side of Farmington Avenue as presented with uh, subject to the following conditions that the engineering comments dated 215 2022 be addressed to the satisfaction of, of the engineering department and that the ADRC recommendations to be implemented as noted in the two in, in the February 7th 2022 letter. Mike Rabul, say second. Wait, are we okay to go? No, that's fine with the second. Okay. Um, are, let's see here. So just two conditions? Yes, I'm gonna respectfully request that the condition for ADRC and um, Mr. Carrier, I'm sorry if you didn't get the, I know I had sent one uh, agenda review and then I sent this with a, a modification. Um, the, I would request that the commission consider changing the wording of the ADRC recommendation to be in accordance with the plans as presented and to the satisfaction of the planning staff. Uh, and this is because there were ADRC re made recommendations such as basically no vinyl at all 
and there's instances where vinyl trim is going to be used on the building. There was a request that um, no internal grills be used on any window. Um, Mr. Kood has expressed the desire that on the residential buildings, uh, just like I think many of us have on our own homes to have internal grills and not the simulated divided lights. So in order to allow a little bit of flexibility, um, the request was that the uh, ADRC be re uh, recommendations be in accordance with the plans as they presented to you, which did have the indication of some vinyl trim and the indication of internal grills on those residential buildings. Um, so if that's something that the commission's agreeable to consider, that would, um, I, I would appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I apologize. I, I definitely, I didn't, I'm reading off the old one. I didn't see that one. Um, all right, so, so how do I go about that? So you can amend your motion. And then if Mr. Grabulis is in agreement, then he can second the amendment to the motion. Okay, so I would amend my motion um, to change the wording of my second condition, that would work? Correct. Okay, so again, Patrick Carrier, um, I, amend my, I amend my motion to change the wording of, my sec of the second condition. Uh, the wording would go as follows, ADRC, uh, it, it would be to um, include ADRC recommendations to be implemented in accordance with the plans as presented and to the satisfaction of the planning staff. So, Mike Balls, I second. Okay, so we have a uh, motion and a second. Uh, discussion, commissioners, any final uh, comments you wanna make? Hey, hey Inez, it's Matt Hunt Wagner. No, just for me, I, I'm good here. I just want, there's nothing to me in this site plan that has changed material since what a prior commission has approved in terms of the master plan or special permit. So just for me and, and people watching, like that's that's how I'm framing it today based on just the site plan as is. So, you know, you know, I'm good with with uh, this motion. Great, thank, thank you. you. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, I think uh, also that, uh, you know, the developer and everyone involved did a, a great job with uh, efficiently and creatively using the space. Uh, there's definitely something for everyone, which I think is the mid, uh, the point of the midpoint, right? Uh, ruling, and which it aligns with. Um, you know, I was thinking about it and I did have a benefit of uh, sitting on the commission when this was first presented, but you know, it, it seems like, you know, when my kids are out of the house, it, it's somewhere I want to probably live too. You know, by the river, the amenities are great. You can grab a bite to eat. Um, and I love the fact that there's uh, access to the bike trail. I think that's that's great. And um, I really, really appreciate that, um, that we're getting that with this project. All right, um, so we have a motion and a second. Let's do a vote. Let's, uh, let's do it one by one. Why not? Uh, Patrick, what's your vote? I'm a yes. Mike Grabulis? Yes. Scott? Yes. Matt? Yes. Liz? Yes. All right. And I'm also a yes. So we're good. Unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you and good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Town of Farmington, we have two items. We'll let uh, Shannon go do her thing here. Thank you. Okay. So we have the first item is a town of Farmington site plan application to replace backup generator at 11 Harlan Road. And we have our uh, engineer from our engineering department, Dylan Riley, is here this evening with us in the conference room to uh, discuss this matter and present the application to you folks. So Dylan, please go ahead. <clears throat> uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Stone Riley. Um, I am an engineer here for the town of Farmington. Um, the 11 Harlan Road site is for a backup generator uh, replacement um, at the pump station on uh, Harlan Road. The uh, current backup generator is an interior backup generator, uh, natural gas to be specific. 
Um, that generator is approximately 50 years old and is in need of replacement to ensure reliability uh, for the station. Um, so the proposed generator is also natural gas. Um, it is being relocated to the exterior of the building, uh, directly behind the building um, with a privacy fence uh, on the uh, eastern side and the southern side um, at the rear of the property. Uh, there is a home located on the east side at 9 Harlan Road. Um, and the rest of the land surrounding the site is owned by the state of Connecticut and is undeveloped. There you can see the small pump station lot and the surrounding um, properties. Um, the new generator is significantly improved from the older one. Um, sound levels uh, while running at load should be no more than say a, a uh, lawnmower, um, which is considerably uh, less than the current uh, interior uh, generator. The generator specifically is a Kohler generator with a uh, sound and uh, weather shielding in the exterior of it. It is being placed on a concrete pad and will have a, a stone around the pad um, to adhere to the comments made by the Inland Wetlands Commission, um, as well as directly between the pad and the building to ensure no erosion um, from the drip edge of the building. Um, there will be a silt fence as well, protecting the wetlands from any sediment and there will be a possibility of light tree trimming um, just as a constructability factor. Um, but all construction should stay within current uh, lawn area behind the building. And that's all. Okay, nice job, Dylan, thank you. Thank you. All right, commissioners, uh, questions for Dylan, Patrick. Oh yeah, so I was, tr I was trying to make sense of the map, the, um, I guess the aerial view. Um, so that fence there is, that's, that's the purpose for that eight foot fence is to shield the neighbor, is that correct? Correct. Okay, and then um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of noise, so it, it's outside, it's an outside generator. The other generator was actually located inside the building. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, uh, correct. The uh, interior generator is actually just straight piped to the exterior. Um, so there's no sound detonating um, whatsoever apart from the building itself um, because the exhaust is just straight piped out of the building. Okay, so 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 that this it's fair to say that this one's gonna make less noise then. than uh, the Far, far less, correct. And I'm assuming the neighbor, you, you, you must have talked to the neighbor and they must be happy about that or did they, they probably got used to the whole thing? Um, I am unaware of any contact to the neighbor, but I can tell you that the decibel reading is about 69 decibels under load. And I'm talking at 75 right now. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah, no, no further questions. Thank you. Thanks, Patrick. Mike? I have no questions. I know these generators are uh, in the building are very old, so nice to see them being replaced. Thank you. Scott? No, no questions. Sounds like a reasonable proposal. Matt? No questions. Liz? Uh, just a quick one. Is there an external fuel tank? Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, it, uh, the, the existing and new generator are both natural gas. 
Um, I, I myself am unaware of where the fuel tank is. No, it's a, it's piped direct. It's a natural, so there's gas yeah. in the street and it comes, it's piped in. Okay, that's what I was wondering. I, I wasn't quite sure on that. Yeah, so it's, so a, no, it's no oil tank, no propane. It's no natural propane gas tank. coming, coming okay. right in. Okay, no, looks good then. Thanks, Liz. And James? No questions. All right. Uh, when is this uh, project? What, what, what is the timing of it? I'm just curious. Well, yeah, I don't know if you have more. I, all I can say is that we have, I believe we have ordered the generators. Right. Um, and the current timetables are always changing with when we will get them. Um, but it is the town's intent to replace them when when possible. Sure. Before, right? So yeah. I think as soon as the generators yeah. arrive, yeah. you know, as soon as yeah. they get them, get okay. them in, then yeah, this is stuff. a preventative. Right. So measure. ideally, sometime over this summer fall before yeah. we happen yeah. to need them, right? When the net for the next power <laughs> outage. It's yep. crazy that the current one is fifty years old. I wonder. If the replacement will last as long, but you don't have to answer that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just like our dishwashers and refrigerators, right? Yeah, <laughs> 10 years, maybe. All right. They get better. All right, so awesome. Uh, so we're going to vote each one separately? I, yes, yeah. they are separate app. We handled yeah. them as separate applications. Sure. So if, we, if we could, please. Sounds good. All right, so um, thank you, commissioners, uh, for your questions. And we need a motion in a second uh, for the first one, well, the 11 Harlan Road one, please. Okay, yeah, Patrick Carrier. Uh, I make a motion to approve the site plan application by the town of Farmington to replace the backup generator at 11 Harlan Road in Farmington. Second. Got Halston, I second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Sounds pretty unanimous. You're all set. Thank you, Dylan. And go ahead for the next one. <laughs> All right. This is a uh, similar project uh, taking place at 40 Batterson Park Road at another pump station of ours. Um, again, the generator is being placed directly behind the building um, out of view from the street. This is a commercially uh, zoned um, area of town. Specifically, zoning is a professional office zone um, and the, what are the plans thank you um, and as you can see uh, the the main difference between uh, this generator installation and the 11 Harlan one is the lack of a privacy fence due to the fact that there are no residential um, zones around the property um, that would be in direct uh, sight of the generator. Uh, we still have a, a silt fence uh, protecting the uh, stream running into the Patterson Park uh, pond. Um, and uh, it's the same generator with the same concrete sized pad um, located at an equal distance behind the building with the same stone um, around the generator to protect from, again, erosion as noted by the Inland Wetland Commission um, for the drip edge of the building. Um, natural gas being piped directly into the generator from the street and the same sound levels are to be expected as for it is the same generator with the same uh, soundproofing and weather enclosure. You're good. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Dylan. All right, commissioners, any uh, questions? Uh, Patrick? No questions. Mike? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Scott? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Matt? No questions, thanks. thanks. Liz? No questions here, thank you. All right, and James? No questions. All right, <laughs> I, I split up my questions. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
uh, it's been a long day. Mm -hmm. How many pump stations do we have? And is that what we're doing is over time slowly updating these generators? Just Yeah, curious. so off the top of my head, I'm not sure how many pump stations we have here in town, but I believe it's around eight or nine. Oh, I think we're, I, I think we're around 17 pump stations. Oh, right? 17? Yes. Mm -hmm. These are okay. the oldest ones, I figure? Or? Uh, I honestly don't know the ranking. Okay, um, yeah. So some of them, the, the pump station that's just around, uh, uh, so this one here at 40 Batterson Park, there's another one at the uh, eastern end of the pond as you're coming down mm -hmm. around into New Britain. Yep. So that pump station was just completely rebuilt. Uh, they had to. Um, so it, I think it just depends on okay. what's it, there's load, the demand, um, the age, there's different pump stations came on in different sequences depending on the development that's around them. So, yeah. Um, but yes, it's just part of, I think, capital improvement projects that need to be done in general with um, our sewer infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Absolutely. I don't want to uh, obviously delay the vote, but uh, no, no. I was just curious. Of course. All right, um, how about a motion and a second, commissioners, on uh, generator number two at uh, 40 Batterson Park? Uh, yeah, Patrick Carrier. Um, I moved to approve uh, the site plan application by the town of Farmington to replace the backup generator at 40 Batterson, uh, Batterson Park Road. And second? Liz Sanford, all second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. You're good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, nice stay for the fun. Or, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> let's see. The next uh, new business item is uh, Town Farm Development LLC. Yes. All right. What? What we got here, it sounds like uh, lots of history of this one. So there is, so um, I think what I'll do is if uh, the commission will indulge me, I'd like to just run through the history, a little bit of the property. And then we have uh, Dave Fault on the phone, who is the representative from Bazudos. Okay. And then uh, Mr. Fault, he's got his, the two uh, event individuals um, that are interested in the events um, can talk about uh, the property. So I think everyone's familiar with the polo grounds. Um, if at any point in time, I can certainly bring up a map up. I did not provide uh, a map, but we can get the aerial, the GIS up at any point in time. Um, when uh, Bazudos took ownership of the polo grounds, they met extensively with Bill Warner and worked really hard to uh, come up with a set of agreements that uh, was agreeable to the town as well as to Pazudos for the operation of the polo grounds. Uh, we're familiar with Dream Ride. It started with the, the Dream Ride events having been at the polo grounds. When Pazudos purchased it, they wanted to restore the polo grounds to its intended use to hosting polo matches and be a uh, a recognized facility, but also wanted to continue uh, being able to host charitable and philanthropic events and other uh, events. So what I provided in the agenda review, and this was also provided to um, Mr. Falk so that he knew what you folks were being provided, uh, was a full rundown of, of how we went through this process. And 2016 was step one. The initial special permit was granted with an initial set of conditions. In 2017, uh, the owner and applicant came back. Uh, the conditions were modified slightly and basically finalized. These are the conditions that we continue to move forth with today. Um, and those are were enumerated. They're the separate uh, attachment. I'll bring those up on the screen here in a second. And then in 2018, the, uh, as part of the approval, excuse me, in 2017 was a requirement that the owner applicant continue to come back and uh, review to make sure that there aren't uh, any issues. Uh, understandably, the, the polo grounds, while it is on the north end and there are 
farm fields around it, there also are residential neighborhoods. There's residences across the street, there's residences to the south, and even uh, across the river. Um, interestingly, we have had calls from individuals across the river saying that, that the noise really travels, the corridor of the river acts as a, just a corridor and then the noise travels up. And it's lower in the valley, so and, and some of the homes are up a little higher on the, um, on the other side of the river. So there are things that, you know, we just, we need to be mindful of and, and it's what really precipitated the conditions being put in place to begin with. Um, in March, 2018, uh, there are no, uh, no substantial complaints had taken place in the previous year. So the uh, approval was granted uh, for one more year. And then in February, 2019, the permanent approval was granted. So the conditions uh, that had been put in place in 2017 became the permanent conditions of approval, which are is this document that had been shared uh, with all of you. So it's the 152 Town Farm Road special permit uh, revised in April of 2017. And these are uh, the, the top end of this is basically permitted uses as of right. And, and these uh, revolve around polo uses and basically daytime uses. And I think even if um, you know they were going to do some some rec mm -hmm. things like soccer, that type of thing, uh, any daytime use uh, type activity, um, and uh, dream ride I believe falls in under under this. Is and then non equestrian polo events was you know, terms were put together. Uh, and this again was in consultation with Bill Warner um, initially, and, and there was quite a bit of back and forth that arrived at, at these conditions. So what we have before us this evening are two public event permits that have come through. Um, and I think you folks are familiar that we've got our building permit system that's online now. Mm -hmm. So all the, when you when we get an approval here at TPZ, the next step is that I see this as a building permit comes through and check it against the conditions of approval uh, before they get their zoning sign off on the building permit. The same thing happens with the public event permits. They, they're handled through the same system. And not only is there a zoning sign off, but there's highway and grounds, there's police department, there's, there's about 10 or 15 other sign offs. And so we do the same type of thing and check it against um, a variety of approvals. These two events, um, there, there's one for the Hartford Symphony on June 16th that uh, does not comply with condition three of our, of the special permit. And there is a Easter Seals event on May 14th. So that does not comply with conditions two and four of the permit. Um, and as noted, condition nine allows the owner to appear before the commission and request modifications to any of these conditions on a per event basis. And that's the commission's choice at this point to uh, review these. Um, at this point, I'm uh, gonna turn it over to Dave Paul and, and Dave, I'd suggest we handle these in sequence too, that we focus a conversation on Hartford Symphony. And then once that's determined, then go to a, a second conversation regarding the Easter Seals event. And so commission, I'll also, I will be looking, you can treat these differently. Um, so we can handle one conversation and then go to the next one and handle that one um, okay. and proceed accordingly. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, excellent description of that. Uh, good evening, um, Mr. Chairman and um, commissioners. Thank you for allowing us the time to present. Uh, for the record, I'm David Fault, representing Tom Farm Development for the Farmington Polo Grounds. So we also have um, with me some folks from the uh, Farmington Club and Polo Club staff that are here in the room with me to answer any questions if needed. Uh, also on this call is um, Steve Collins and Audra. Um, with the Harford Symphony Orchestra to take questions specific to the um, event. So as um, Shannon had indicated, this one is um, an event that we would like special consideration from um, the commission to be able to approve this event. It's 
um, going to be held on a Thursday night, which is outside of what the normal conditions are. Right now, weekday events um, were limited to daytime events, less than 200 people, and to conclude by dusk. Um, this would be a little different than that. We would be um, having the people come in. They would use the Farmington Club paved parking lot um, to come in and park. Um, so that vehicle traffic is something that uh, is allowed by right on the Farmington Club property. So it's not traffic that we're introducing outside of the permit condition for the Polo Club. On that picture that Shannon has up on the screen, um, you're looking at the Farmington River on the right hand of the, the picture. Um, towards the top, you see the paved parking area. That is the Farmington Club um, property. The line that separates the paved parking from the um, white area, which is the event tents, that's actually the property line between the Farmington Club and the Polo Club. Okay, so we'll be using the Farmington Club for all vehicular and the pedestrian traffic as they come out. They'd be walking across the fence line and into that first expo tent that's along the property line. Um, as you can see in the layout of the um, tent, the stage is situated towards the side and it'd be directed towards the Farmington Club and that's where the orchestra would be playing from. Um, with that, um, we can get into some uh, more specific description of run of show and the um, uh, details about the event, the cause, the nature, the music. Um, I'll turn it over to Steve. Great, thank you, Dave. Yep. And thank you to the Planning and Zoning Commission for hearing our request this evening. Your time is very much appreciated. Can you all hear me okay? Yes, yes. we can, thank you. Great, thank you. So if it's okay, I'd like to spend just a minute or two providing some background information on the Hartford Symphony, describing in, in a little more detail our event with planning on June 16th, and then of course answer your questions. Is that okay? Sure, certainly. Great, so thank you. Um, the Hartford Symphony is currently in its 78th annual season. We are a nonprofit organization, and our mission is to enrich lives and community through great music. Proceeds from our annual gala help fund not only our concerts, but principally our education and community services, which do not generate any earned revenue on their own. In a typical year, we partner with dozens of schools and community organizations like the Legacy Foundation, the Chrysalis Center, the Boys and Girls Clubs, the YMCAs, to provide free access to the arts to those who otherwise may not have that access. We derive more than half of our total revenue from donations and special events like our annual gala. And of course, I'm sure it'll come as no surprise to the commission that the orchestra has really suffered over the last two years from the pandemic with disappearing audiences, furloughed musicians and reduced staffing. The gala is a critically important to our continued viability, particularly at this vulnerable time trying to come out of the COVID pandemic. Our event, our annual gala, is an opportunity for the HSO to thank our loyal supporters in person and also ask for their continued generosity. Total attendance at the event will be approximately 450 people, including the orchestra itself. We are honoring Farmington residents, Jim and Rebecca Lurie, for their outstanding support, not only of the HSO, but of many community organizations throughout Connecticut and beyond. We are in discussion with Governor Lamont's office about his attendance. In the past, the governor and U.S. senators have attended many of our galas. And we are taking great care, like Dave alluded to, to set up the venue to minimize the impact on the community and to minimize the volume outside of the event tent on the Polo Club grounds. You may or may not know that the tent has side panels around its entire perimeter, making it a completely enclosed venue. And as Dave said, we're setting up the stage at the south end of the tent, facing northward away from almost all the area residences. Our event is from 6 to 11 p.m. However, the only portion that will feature amplified music is an orchestra performance from 9.25 to 10 p.m. 
The orchestra will be performing classical music only. No rock and roll, no contemporary dance music or other more aggressive styles of music. We will adhere to local volume limits at all times and work with Mr. Fault and his experienced staff to make sure that we're maximizing venue operation and, and paying close attention to those limits. We are 100% confident that we can execute our event to the highest professional standards and with great respect to the local community. This is a community which we count on for their support. So we respectfully ask the Farmington Planning and Zoning Commission for your permission to hold our event on June 16th at the Farmington Club and Polo Club as planned. That's all I had prepared to say today and I, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, anything else, Dave, that you'd like to add to the for the Hartford Symphony Orchestra matter? I think we're open to questions now, Shannon. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, Patrick. Questions for the presenters? Oh yeah. What is so? This tent you, is it enclosed on all sides, and there's just like a a door or something to get in, like one door, or it's got to be more than that. But is it enclosed pretty much? I guess this is my question. It's uh, enclosed for the most part on all four sides. There's a probably a 20 foot wide opening on the front that allows people to walk through. Um, this is a large um, expo clear span type of tent where it's uh, 132 feet wide left to right and 300 feet deep front to back. So it's a big truss frame. So the opening in the front is um, is large, it's about 20 feet, like I said, wide across the front. There may be some small egress openings along the side, which allow for you know, emergency exits if needed. And this question, I guess, would be for, for Shannon. Um, has an event like this uh, been done at, at, like this? You know what I mean? Like a, on a Thursday at uh, those hours with, with that large of a crowd? Not that I'm aware of. OK. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, Mike? Oh, actually, isn't Mike? Because I've recused myself from the uh, polo grounds. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the reminders. Uh, James, uh, you will be voting on this matter. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thank you. Yep. Um, sorry about that. Uh, Scott? Yeah, so I, I think I have a good sense of where this is on the, on the polo grounds property, but where are the closest neighbors? Is it across the river? From there, where where are we looking at in terms of close neighbors? Uh, yeah, let me. Hang on a second. So that gives you one image, but I can yeah. bring up our GIS. Hang on a sec. I'd be happy to share that image uh, if you'd like. I have it pulled up on my computer. Yeah, I want to bring up our GIS that has the full. Okay, everyone can see the town GIS on their screen. Yep. Yep. Okay, good answer. <laughs> Sorry to make you go through this, Shannon. No, this isn't any trouble at all. This, um, so here, this happens to be an image okay. with the, the top isn't on the tent, but this is the steel frame that, that Dave Fault was speaking of. So that's the frame of the tent structure. Here's the Farmington Club and the parking that you can see in the other image, right? So you could see the park, you could see the tent, you could see the parking, and then the, the access way that they're going to create over. So from a residence standpoint, there are residents across the street, there are residents to the mm -hmm. south, and there are residents across the, the river. So that's what we are dealing um, with from a, a residential standpoint. Um, Mr. Collins, would you mind for, for my benefit, I'm sure perhaps everybody else picked up on it, I was, I was looking at a couple of other notes when you mentioned the amplified music, can you Clarify the time for me again, please. Sure. Yeah, the, the plan is for the orchestra performance to be from 9.25 to 10 p.m. Okay. So, so 10. Okay. 
So from 10 to 11, because the event uh, is requesting permission until 11, what's anticipated to go on in that last hour? Right, so from 10 to 11 p.m., guests are, are checking out. There's, a, there's an auction where they can you know, bid and purchase on items. So they check out, they are um, they're saying goodbye and leaving. We, we, we allow an hour for that. Um, it typically, it doesn't really take that long though, to be honest. So it's kind of a, you know, a maximum duration. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And sorry, thank Scott, I hijacked your-, your No, attention. that's okay. No, actually, my, I think my next question is for you too, Shannon. Have we ever had a public hearing on this through the history of sort of the special permitting for this, for use in this area? So, yeah, so originally, yes. So in 2016 okay. and in 2017, uh, public hearings were held both times. In 2018, when it was renewed, it was not. And in 2019, uh, right. when the, it was finalized, it was not because there weren't any changes to the conditions made. But in, in both 17 and 18, or 16 and 17, excuse me, in 16 and 17, 16 was the original, and in 17, there were tweaks to the conditions, so it, there was another hearing. Okay, thank you for clarifying. I'm all set. Thank you, Scott. Good questions. Uh, how about you, Matt? Yeah, how, many, how many parking spaces are currently here at the Polo Grounds? So the, how many are on the So the park yes. number? Yeah, 24, 24. So, thank you. So on the Farmington Club side, we have about 250 parking spots that are paved on the um, par on the paved site. And on the Farmington Polo Club, um, that's kind of just a wide open grassy area. So we can fit thousands of cars there if needed. Got it. So I, I, I think you mentioned 450 attendees. So I was just thinking about, like, you know, if there's not, if, is there enough parking for those amount of people? Yeah, I, I, I would add that most most of our guests come in pairs. Okay. Um, so I, I, I think it'll be just fine. All right, great. And just to confirm, uh, the attendees are mostly uh, donors to the uh, to the Hartford Symphony Orchestra. Is that is that correct? Exactly. Don donors to the Hartford Symphony Orchestra, and, um, a small number of special guests like perhaps the governor or folks. Sure. Sure. Yep. Got it. Okay. Thanks. No, no additional questions for me. Thank you, Matt. How about you, Liz? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yeah. Quick question. Uh, two quick questions. In addition to the music, the, I'm assuming there'll be a program with announcements, and that will be also amplified. Is that correct? Correct. Within. Uh, okay. Uh, yep. Yeah, sorry. Of course, they, they'll be amplified within the tent. It, Self only, not throughout the entire grounds. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And then the other question is, how about uh, traffic uh, control on departure or arrival and departure? Yeah, yeah. And is that so, going to be that? Because that can be a tricky corner right there to get okay. out of the Farmington Club. So I'll, I'll, I'll add a couple of comments from the symphony's perspective. And then Dave, I'm sure you have some, some experience to offer in that area. So from the symphony's perspective, folks, folks arrive and depart um, over a period of time. It's not really all at once, especially on, on departure. Remember I said after the orchestra performance, we're done with business really and, and people trickle out. So that, that's a very gradual process. Arrival, um, arrival happens over the course of about 45 minutes. So that's really not a, it, it's not a crush by any means. Dave, I'm sure you have experience with your traffic handling uh, personnel. Yeah, so based upon the nature of the event and how the gradual flow in and out comes, uh, we look at this event very similar to how a large wedding or simultaneous weddings would be occurring at the Farmington Club. So really nothing special or out of the ordinary for that type of use. Okay, that makes sense. It just seemed like a lot of people and if they were all gonna head out at the same time, it could be a little messy, but that makes sense. You guys know that, uh, that stuff better than I do. Uh, other than that, I'm all set, thank you. Thank you, Liz. And uh, James. I don't have any further questions, thanks. Okay. Um, as I'm sitting back and listening to everyone, uh, wh why wouldn't you hold this event inside the Farmington Club? 
Yes, th thank you for asking. I was I was going to ask if I could offer some more comments before we, we wrapped, if, if someone didn't ask that question. Um, so it, it's, as I'm sure you, you can all appreciate, uh, the, the pandemic has made it really um, challenging to, to hold large scale indoor events. Um, we, we've been doing concerts at the Bushnell Performing Arts Center and elsewhere since October of 2021. However, those, those events do not involve food and beverage. As I'm sure you can appreciate, that puts a whole new level of complication um, in place regarding the health safety protocols. Back in, in the fall, we made the decision to move our gala, which is traditionally indoors, to an outdoor venue. As it turns out, to, to buy some, some comfort level with those health safety protocols. As it turns out, we were not the only nonprofit organization going along the same, the same thought process. Um, I will tell you that it's been extremely difficult to marry our performance schedule with the uh, availability schedules of the really very few outdoor venues in the area that, that do events of this nature. Um, and we were really fortunate to, uh, to work with the, the, the Farmington Club uh, personnel, Dave and his staff, to try to make this event work. In fact, the only reason why we're not doing this event on a Saturday in June is because the polo club has polo matches every Saturday in June, therefore, you know, creating a, a conflict there. So it's been really very challenging to pull this together. And, um, uh, you know, we're, we're glad we found we found the venue. Does that answer your question about the, why we think it's important to be outside, though, to, to buy the greatest degree of flexibility with the health safety protocols and to to, to be responsive to our guest needs. Okay. Um, so this is a one-time event. Uh, of, of course, you know, we, the business, mm, encouraging the businesses to use the facility is, or in, in this case, nonprofit. Uh, of course, it makes sense. You know, the fact that it's a Thursday, it's 200 plus more people than permitted. It's, till 11, you know, just the opening and closing of the car doors. I just can't even imagine. We have, uh, we have uh, negative comments when a restaurant um, has live music in town and it carries over the river. Um, yeah, aye, 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 okay. Um, hey, Annette, can I ask a question? Yeah, of course, go ahead. So I know a part of, uh, one of the things we th are thinking about, or maybe not, is conducting a public hearing. I was obviously that delays the approval of this application. So I was wondering if the applicant could comment on, you know, what a delay in this application, what type of hardship that would do for you and your organization in planning this event if the commission wanted to receive public comment. Yes, thank you, thank you for asking that question. Um, so uh, look, the, the the event is June sixteenth. And as I said before, it's it's not like there's venues of this nature on every you know every corner of every town with which to work to try to to try to plan an event. Um, if a public hearing is is deemed necessary, I assume that would be next month, roughly a month from now. Is that correct? Correct. So um, it, that that would that would put us in the position of having to make a very difficult decision before that public hearing. Um, I'm afraid that we really would not be able to wait to know what the outcome of that hearing would be, um, you know, without making backup plans. So um, it, <laughs> I realize I'm not providing a really great direct answer to your question. It would put us in a terribly difficult position. And I, I, I can fully appreciate what may be running through your minds, which is, well, it would have been helpful for us to come to this commission earlier. Um, it, um, it uh, that's true, I suppose. It, it rather recently came to our attention that the permissions needed to be, uh, you know, applied for in, in the sequence that they are. And as the commissioner noted earlier, there's there's many steps to the process. Um, obviously, we've cleared all the steps up until this point, um, and we're optimistic that um, that we can, you know, we, we're confident we can pull this event off in a really professional manner. Um, so. It, it, it would it would be really a difficult place for us to be and to have to wait another month at least to to know the viability of it. Um, this this is Ines St. James again and you know um, 
I, I don't know where the communication, you know, breakdown occurred, but this parcel goes back as Shannon indicated and uh, Mr. Fault agreed, uh, goes back many years. It's very well documented. And it seems to me that somewhere someone acted prematurely without regard for these uh, procedures in place. We live in a small town, there are neighbors around, and uh, it is a big deal. It's a big deal to you as a nonprofit, and I understand it's a big uh, you know, fundraiser for you too, but it's also a big deal to the community. Um, I, I feel that it, uh, a public hearing is warranted. Um, is that an option, Shannon, or? It's at the commission, so it would need, we would need to vote on, I would suggest a vote on that. Um, okay. As part of that condition, it is a option for the commission to request a public hearing, um, but I think you'd want a majority right, sure. on that. Of course, um, yeah. May I ask yes, a, another ahead. question? Sure. Mr. Collins, is it possible to adjust the timing or adjust the timing of the music to start and finish earlier? I understand you folks have a layout, you have a game plan in place. Um, I'm trying to see if there's a way to perhaps reach a compromise, if, if there's a way to adjust the timing of the, uh, the music. I understand that it's classical and that it is not rock and roll or Jimmy Buffett or any, any other uh, crazy thing, but at the same time, you know, it is the fact that it's classical music may not translate, it may just translate uh, as noise, if you'll pardon that, um, as it dissipates out. So um, I'm just curious if you've got any flexibility or thoughts on, on timing or restructuring your program a bit. Sure. Um, you know, um, we, 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 we've talked about this and, and anticipated that that may be a question and a, and a very fair question at that. Um, the answer to your, to your question is yes. Um, if, if the commission would like to provide some guidelines for us, um, we can determine if we can work within them. And I'm very optimistic that, that we'll be able to, to accommodate whatever those guidelines may be. If you would prefer that the concert is over by 9.30 instead of 10, then, then we'll work with that. Um, kind of, you name it. Thank you. Okay. That, would that be a condition, Shannon? Or? Absolutely. So, okay. so the commission has okay. basically carte carp blanche. You can, the commission can set um, whatever, again, reasonable conditions. And, and really it's the, um, you know, it's, it's the music, and, and when and the um you know the the end time for the event and if they you know slide everything rather than from 6 to 11 it's 5 30 to 10 30 or what, right, right. whatever yeah the the commission has uh that discretion okay all right um nice right. so we should we we can vote in the and then we absolutely okay. yeah no we yeah, need to okay. treat these separately yeah, we, because they're distinctly different sure. requests yeah. and they need to be d discussed separately okay all right hey, um uh, hey, it's yeah. hey it's meta fagner can i just make another comment yes so so about the the i i, I think i'm actually good with the music part but i think you know maybe because I, I think dusk at that time of year is probably 7 38 o'clock right so it's probably another couple hours and school's out. So again, I, I'm okay with that. The part I, I'm thinking about is the public hearing or lack of public hearing. Um, I understand like this industry, it's a sort of extraordinary circumstances where we're trying to get events and, and pull them off with everything going on. So, um, you know, that that's the part, again, just for me thinking about, I always kind of want the public to weigh in on things like this, but I get we're sort of in extraordinary circumstances here and do have a time a time crunch to pull off a big event. So, um, so again, just, just okay. want to make a comment. No, absolutely. Thank you, Matt. So why don't we attack it this way? Uh, public hearing. Let's, I want to hear from everyone. Patrick, do you feel pa public hearing is warranted? Uh, in this case, because it's just a one shot deal. And if let's say, it was, you know, we were get we were going to get a lot of outcry from the public. We would know for next time. No, I'm not that concerned about it, to be honest. Okay. How about you, Mike? 
Oh, no, Mike. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Scott? <laughs> I wasn't ready either. Uh, I do like the idea of a public hearing. I would prefer to go that route. I understand the situation that we're in tonight. Um, I am open to what Shannon suggested in terms of maybe compromising on, a, on an earlier time um, to account for that, but um, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Thank you. Um, Matt, we just heard, heard you, so I'm good, but anything else? Sorry, I don't mean to be rude. I, it came across <laughs> horrible. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. No, I, I think I'm, I'm good without the, the public hearing part for this, <laughs> just for this Thank circumstance you. here. How about you, Liz? Um, being that this is my first uh, action of this nature, I uh, initially didn't think there would be a problem um, considering the time of year, the time of day. Uh, and I didn't, wouldn't think, I, I tend to think that a public hearing, we don't necessarily need it. Uh, but I'm also, I don't know history of noise complaints and how vociferous neighbors can be and how upsetting it can be. So I, I'm middle of the road. I'm sorry to waffle, but um, <laughs> I could see an argument for both sides. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, James? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think uh, changing the hours, if, if our primary concern is um, the public hearing and having the public weigh in on this, um, but there's a time constraint with that. Um, I think the best thing to do is is to, you know, I think it's a perfectly reasonable expectation to amend the hours of operation to dial it back a little bit to avoid some of the public outcry that could potentially occur. So I'm of I'm of the mindset of there's a there's a balance here. And I think Shannon's uh, recommendation was was the one that I would um, weigh in on. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, I strongly feel that um, this should be open to the public, but I understand where everyone is coming from. Um, I, you know, there's a reason why this, uh, we have procedures in place and, um, I already said enough about that. So let's talk about, um, the limiting of the hours and is it the event or is it the music or combination of both? Does anyone want to uh, throw in a, um, suggestion and we can discuss it? I was thinking both. I mean, that, that was my initial impression is, is dial back the music, dial back the, the end time, maybe an hour. Go to right. go to ten o'clock, maybe nine thirty or something like that. That would be my um, ideal scenario. So I'm putting you on the spot a little bit, but you know, we'll obviously I'll have to uh, agree. So your proposal is event starts five or five thirty. Um, I say uh, five. Okay, and what's the end time? Nine thirty. And how about for music? They were given an hour before that, so that would be 8.30, so maybe 7.45 after dinner. Okay. So for the event uh, for Thursday, June 16th, um, we are thinking of uh, the event uh, to start at 5 and end at 9.30. Uh, the amplified music would be 7.45 to 8.15, is that what I wrote down? Yeah, I said 8.30. 8.30, 830. Sure. 8.30, okay. Commissioners, what do you think of that um, suggestion? Um, just a question, does that align with, with is that just the, the whole event was just dialed back, uh, what, an hour? I kind of lost my About, spot. Yeah, it was so. uh, an hour and a half. So the end time was pushed back from 11 to 9.30. Right, and then the new start time is five. Is it the same amount of hours in between? Because again, I lost my. Uh, I yeah, we'll, I, I lost we'll the hours out. too. I was. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't <laughs> with you, Patrick. It's, so it, we're it's a little like, short, right? Five to, yeah, ten. I'm not as concerned with the start time, quite honestly. So the start time to me isn't really um, right because it's during the day. It's it's yeah. I, I the start time isn't relevant, and they're going to have staff there, and they're going to be set up and a variety of things. So that's going to be kind of a, a trickle in. So it's really it's the it's the end time mm -hmm. and the uh, and the yeah. music. I guess I guess overall it was just dialing it back sixty to ninety minutes, something or something in that okay. vicinity. So are we, nope. now I'm kind of doing a roundabout. Okay, so the end 
our recommendation is to keep the 10 p.m. as we have in the rules. Is that what I'm hearing? And then the music would be ending at 9.30? That's what that this is Liz Sanford. That's what I think would be a good idea. By the way, I googled uh, sunset on the June sixteenth. It's eight twenty eight p.m. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Thank you. Are you checking? So you? ten p.m. ten p.m. is the end time for events that when they easy. are on the weekends. Friday, Saturday, Sunday is the end time for weekend events. And this is a Thursday. And this is a Thursday, yeah. and it's, yeah. I believe, well, I don't know with snow days if school will be out. Right, I was going to. I don't, I don't think so anymore. <laughs> I right. think school, but we're at the tail end. Right. right, so, right, right. And it's, oh, it's, it's matter of fact, just a quick question. Like the end, can you just define end time? Is that everyone needs to be kind of cleared out of there by that time? Basically, yes. So their, their music, so they, um, Mr. Collins had indicated that the music would end at 10. Right. Um, under their original proposal, music ends at 10, their event ended at 11 and indicated that from 10 to 11 is when everyone is trickling out and um, taking care right. of payout for auction items and whatnot. So we'd right. still need to allow um, that transition to, to take place right. so that they can appropriate clo appropriately close out their event. What, what about the just shifting everything of 30 minutes back? Right, so eleven to ten to ten thirty, and the music stops at nine thirty instead of ten. It's yep. Yeah, is is that uh? That's what we need to establish, right? It, it sounds like an event was planned um, prematurely. We're trying to work with the applicant. We all agree that it, you know, it, it's a, a great organization. They, you know, with COVID, uh, they were greatly impacted. We're trying to make the best situation here in light of what has happened. Um, so we just need to vote on it and uh, what are we comfortable with? As, okay, you know, so, so Patrick here, so it sounds like, so if we were to dial it back one hour, right? So the amplified music would be over after nine because they originally were saying 9.25 to 10 and then the event is over at 11. So if we, if we said the event over at 10 and amplified music over at nine. Yeah, that's nice and easy, well, I agree. Um, does every commissioner's discussion, are you comfortable with that plan? Music ends 9 p.m., event ends at 10 p.m.? Yeah, I think that's a, a reasonable compromise. I agree. Okay, Liz? Uh, I agree also, and school is right now uh, scheduled last day is the 13th of June. Thank you. Aren't you a handy person to have yes. on the call this evening? Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> All right. Um, it sounds a uh, great discussion. Thank you. Um, uh, like a motion in yeah. a second and a vote. Yeah, yeah. We uh, definitely want a motion and a second and a vote before we go on to uh, the other event. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to give this a shot and then we'll fix it. Because I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. So, Patrick Carrier, I make the motion to approve the public event permit 80990 by Hartford Symphony Orchestra Gala um, with the following conditions, no amplified music after nine o'clock and the event to be over by 10 o'clock. A second, please. This is James Radcliffe, I'm second. All right, let's do a vote. All in favor? Aye. Oh wait, actually, Aye. hold on, hold on before I know, sorry. Any discussion before the vote? Okay, okay, thank you. Sorry about that. All right, uh, vote please. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we're good. Um, okay. So the next event is, let's see, a Saturday, May 14th. Mm -hmm. So Saturday, normally things end at 10, right? Correct. All right, and then, uh, yeah, uh, it's, um, so Mr. Paul presenting or? Oh, well, yeah. we can start the same way, same okay. way that we, we did. So I had already, uh, everything's out. Uh, the conditions that I had concerns with when reviewing the event permit, and this is for the Easter Seals 35th anniversary crystal ball fundraiser. Uh, condition two, events are limited to 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. 
and condition four amplified music is limited to 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. So it's really the 10 p.m. closing time um, on those two conditions. The request in the public event permit is from 5.15 to 11.30 p.m. And how many people? Uh, I do not have that. It's a little less concerning for a weekend. There are no, um, uh, there is no capacity limit for okay. a weekend okay. uh, event. So, and I think this, this is the Easter Seals layout that I've been presented. Okay. So uh, Dave, do you want to start us off on this one as well briefly, and then we can hand it over to the Easter Seals folks? Yes, thank you, Shannon. And for the record, again, Dave Fall with Town Farm Development, um, representing the Farmington Polo Club. And um, we have staff from, again, Polo Club and Farmington Club, as well as uh, representatives from the Easter Seals to discuss this event. Um, as you mentioned, this is a Saturday event. Um, the layout of the um, floor plan that you see on the screen in front of you, that is uh, very much the same as the Hartford Symphony um, layout. That is the same tent that we're in. Their stage is oriented in the same direction, facing out towards the um, uh, Farmington Club. So um, again, it's a Saturday event. Their run of show is a little bit different than the Harford Symphony run of show would be, and um, their evening concludes with dancing to their program and the music, and that's what is running uh, later in the evening. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to um, Ms. Robin Sharp. She's um, president of Easter Seals. Thanks. Thank you, Dave, and thank you, everyone, members of the commission and, and Madam Chair for having us this evening. Uh, Easter Seals is one of the largest nonprofit providers of healthcare in the country. Uh, we specialize in rehabilitation for people with disabilities and veterans. We've been serving veterans since World War II and this pandemic has had disproportionately negative impacts on people with disabilities and veterans. Uh, in 2020, we canceled all of our fundraising events. Um, so it's also had an impact on our on our bottom line as well. And fundraising is incredibly important. All of our veteran services are 100% philanthropy funded. We had the pleasure of being at the Polo Grounds for our event last year. We did a drive-in event, which was kind of one of a kind, um, very successful. This year, we really are hoping to go back to that more traditional um, auction gala feel, but in a place where our donors and our sponsors feel more comfortable. So the, the tent was ideal because it allows us that room to really spread out tables, spread out silent auction, things so that people can, you know, and have a, a large dance floor so that people can um, be together and still feel safely uh, distanced. Um, Presenting sponsors for the event are, are Stanley Black & Decker, Pratt Whitney, and, and Dell Technologies, along with a host of other um, really important uh, businesses in, in the community. Um, we expect about 250 people. They are all donors and sponsors of Easter Seals. Uh, we we're requesting the music to go from 9.30 to 11.30. We can certainly adjust that time frame if need be. 11 o'clock would be ideal. Um, again, we'll work with whatever it is that we need to work with. Uh, it's a wedding band type of dance music, no heavy metal, rock and roll, um, just fun dance music. And we do utilize the police for traffic control. Thank you. Sure. And I can answer any, any other questions that you have, or I, I can try to. Okay. Can I get a clarification on the music? You said it's a, a band and not a DJ, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And the music portion was 9.30 to 11.30? That's in the original plan, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, commissioners. Uh, Patrick? Sorry. Um, yeah, uh, no questions. I mean, I think it's probably going to be something where we're going to adjust the time again. Um, and you already agreed to that, I guess. Um, so no questions. Thank you. Uh, Scott? Yeah, I'd like to see us. I don't have any questions. I would like to see it pushed a little bit earlier. I think 1130 is a little late compared to the guidelines we have in place. But I'm sure we'll get to that, as Patrick said. All right. Uh, Matt? 
Uh, no additional questions. Liz? Uh, no additional questions here. And James? I mean, this would be a glaring inconsistency if we were to rule a different way. So I think we should, uh, you know, talk about a, a dialing it back. Um, the sure. Hours. Sure. Um, so um, absolutely. And let's come up with a suggestion. I just, um, I just want to, you know, obviously do the right thing, make sure everybody's happy. Uh, welcome to our town. But, the, you know, I, I don't know what the communication is between, you know, the polo grounds and the um, different um, folks that request the space, but some work that has to be baked in that there are rules that the town has and Polo Grounds has agreed to. Um, I just feel bad for both the Hartford Symphony uh, gentleman and the lady from Easter Seals. Um, anyway, that's just my little soapbox. For um, weekend, what is the, uh, we just filed the noise ordinance. Uh, so weekend, nope, the <laughs> events, uh, events are supposed to end by 10 in amplified music also end by 10. Uh, that's based on conditions two and four of the special permit. Okay. All right, commissioners, what are we comfortable with? We did one hour, right, on the, the other application. Uh, we split everything an hour. An hour, hours. right. But this, yeah, it's different circumstance. Right. Um, but, yeah, but, you know, this is in May, too, so. Right, which, is the tent heated? The tent is not heated. Uh, we can rent heat okay. for the tent if needed, but uh, as a rule, it's not heated. Okay. May 14th, maybe cold. <laughs> let's, right. hope, let's hope it's warm. <laughs> uh, if we did that, you know, so it's a Saturday. If we rolled back, I'm just think, talking out loud, one hour, that's, you know, is that enough time back? Do we stick to the 10 commissioners? I, I need your help, please. I, I kind of feel the one hour, just like the other one. And, and my opinion is kind of like, we'll just see how it goes and what kind of feedback we get. But if, if we do the one hour, it's consistent. If we do more than that, it seems like it's going to start to, you know, really impact the event that they're trying to have. Yeah, I feel like the difference is, you know, a weekend versus weekday kind of thing. So I'm on board with that. I agree with the hour as well. Did I go out of order? I'm sorry. No. <laughs> it's okay. I agree it's okay. with the hours. Yeah, I agree with the hour as well. How about you, Liz? Uh, I also uh, feel the hour is reasonable on both sides. Okay. So, so, can, that can, was the kingdom music ten. No, uh, well, that's fine. I may, um, Ms. Sharp, can I ask a clarifying question? So your event, how is, so the, you end with the music from nine, uh, well, at now 9.30 to 11.30. We're suggesting pushing it back to, to 10.30. What happens then? Music ends and just everybody packs up and leaves. There's no closeout. There's no, so are there auction items? Are there things? You know, I was looking at this too at the 11.30 time frame and knowing what it's like, you know, leaving an event like that and 11.30 is midnight by the time you drag, you know, those, there's always those few that like to stay to the end. And um, which is great, you know, it, it's great. And it's, uh, it sounds like a lovely evening out. But again, I, you've already heard our concerns from a, a neighbor standpoint. So I was curious as to how these kind of wrap up in the evening. Yeah, I experience is people start cashing out actually as soon as the auction is over. So while the music's playing, uh, people are going to start cashing out and some people are going to start leaving. Uh, there will be a few that stay to the end, but cash out's going to end before the end of the, the music. So people are gonna have to cash out their items. Okay. And then, yeah, then they're free to, you know, and they can go to their cars or they can stay and dance for a little while longer. But as soon as the music's over, the band starts packing up, things start closing down and, and we're moving out. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Mm -hmm. All right, commissioners, um, who would like to um, take a stab at a motion and a second, please? Uh, so, so I guess if we, if there's two things here. The event is limited from eight to ten, and then the amp. So the amplified music. So which one comes first? I guess the, the music goes off at. If so, if we say we push it back one hour, which would be ten thirty, I guess it would go for both, right? The amp. So the music would end at the same time as everybody's got to be leaving. 
right? And then you understand what I'm saying by that? My yeah, question. It, mm-hmm. it sounded like that, right? Yeah. Both, everything, yeah. right, both. Yeah, you can end both at the same time. Okay, so, and then they trickle out. So they, so it ends at, so it, it basically it ends at 1030 and then they trickle out and however long it takes to get out. Yes. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, so Patrick Carrier, so uh, hang on, one other question. The So the motion would be, would it have to, would it be both the amplified music or just ends? If I just no, say no. It, I, I would prefer both. both please. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So Patrick Carey, I move to approve the public event permit 81108 for the Easter Seals 35th anniversary crystal ball fundraiser on Saturday, May 14, 2022, uh, with the following conditions that the event ends no later than 1030 and there's no amplified music any later than 1030. How about a second? This is Liz Sanford, I second. Thank you. Any discussion, commissioners? You understand what we're voting on? All right, let's take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We're good. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, everybody. Hmm. Okay. All right. Um, oh, next few will um, hopefully be nice and quick. We're accepting the applic- next uh, three applications. Uh, the first one is uh, for uh, from excuse me Scott Thompson. We need a motion and a second to accept the application, please. Oh uh, yeah, Patrick Carrier. I make the motion to accept the application by Scott Thompson for a special permit for expansion of home located at. 125 Woodpond Road in an R20 zone and schedule a public hearing for it with a recommended hearing date of April 11, 2022. Second, please. This is Liz Sanford, second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, next um, application. Uh, again, F- we're accepting application from Robert Sheshinger Jr. Motion, please, and a second. Patrick Carrier, I make the motion to accept the application by Robert C. Sheshinger Jr. for special permit for accessory apartment use at, at 119 Copper Mine Road in an R40 zone and schedule a public hearing with a recommended hearing date um, of April 11th, 2022. Second. Scott Halston, I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We're good. And the last new business item is a exception, accepting, excuse me, of an application from Pond LLC. We need a motion and a second. Patrick Carrier, I make the motion to accept the application by Pond LLC for a change of zone from PR zone to special innovation floating zone and site plan approval for multi-family apartment building at seven at 74-76 Batterson Park Road and schedule a public hearing with a recommended hearing date of April 11, 2022. And a second, please. Matt Hudfagner, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we're good. Yay. Go Shannon. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting there. Um, first item up under planner's report, it has to do with the demolition of an existing building at 62 South Road. Um, and this is to this notice to you. Sorry, I'm trying to drive and talk at the same time. Here we go. Um, this notice to you is uh, required as part of a change to the zoning regulations in, uh, in 2018 from Mr. Warner, uh, Article 5, Section 2, the zoning enforcement officer shall refer, refer site plans um, for the construction of all new uh, buildings and the demolition of all principal buildings to the commission for determination of zoning compliance. Um, so the applicant is looking to demolish the home at 62 South Road. 
at this time, there are no other applications in regarding this property. Uh, I have exchanged emails with the demolition contractor and he has confirmed that the property will be backfilled and uh, seated so that there won't be a basement hole left. Uh, utility disconnects and other demolition related requirements have been provided to the building office as required. Um, it is not a historic building and does not meet the 75 year requirement for any other historic notification. Uh, it was constructed in 1965 and is 57 years old. So I need, uh, what I'm requesting, obviously if the commission has any questions, I'm happy to answer them, but I'm requesting uh, the commission to confirm that I may proceed with the zoning sign off for the demolition permit. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, questions, commissioners, Patrick? Uh, so I missed the first part. What, so uh, who owns the piece? Is it it's part of what project? It's not part of a project. It, 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 there is no project. The owner is 80 South Road LLC, and there, it is not part of any project at this particular point in time. We don't have any application, um, but they are looking to demolish the, the building. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, yeah, no issue here. Okay. Uh, Mike? Sorry. No questions. All right. How about you, Scott? Any concerns with Shannon signing off? No, nope, no questions. No, no concerns. Matt? No concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Liz? Uh, just a quick clarification. When they demol demolish the house, they demolish all the little side and ancillary buildings out there, the sheds and stuff. Everything's cleaned, cleaned up? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. No questions. And James? Oh, good. Am I in too? All right. Me too, Shannon. You have our approval. Thank you. Okay, no. Thank you. Thank you for the heads up. No, absolutely. Okay, we're going to move on to the next one. Uh, 20 South Main Street in Unionville. I'm going to drive over on our DIS just so that we've got it in front of us. Um, the applicant is requesting the installation of a generator at the front of their building. This is the uh, the bottle shop uh, generator is going to go basically right in this general vicinity. Um, Why did I think they had one already? No, not okay. a judge. So they had what they have are um, there had been HVAC units ah, there. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, and the HVAC units are smaller and can be closer to the building. So the, the generator, um, I've, got, I've got the dimensions here. The generator is three feet wide by six and a half feet long and four feet tall, and it sits on a six inch pad. Um, and it has to be at least three feet from the building. So it's three feet out from the building. It's three feet wide. So now we're at six feet out from the building. And then it has to be three feet clear at the front of the generator. So now we're nine feet out of kind of clear space. Um, and it has to be 10 feet from the gas meter, which is uh, actually the gas meter is right here. Um, they can get this installed without having to move the sign that is at the front of the building. So the sign will remain. Um, there's a gas meter. Mm -hmm. um, so I did send this to ADRC. And, and so here's information on the generators as well. Um, ADRC, you know, again, there isn't, you know, anyone that's familiar with the property, um, there's not many places you're putting a generator. You know, this is, this yellow line is the property limit. So there's not really any other logical place. And when you take a look at where the utilities are that you need to connect in for a generator, this is the logical place to put it. So now it's, what do we do so that it is not this obtrusive box out at the front, um, right as we're driving up and down our, our main street. So uh, ADRC is recommending a board on board fence, uh, natural material, so whether wood or seed, you know, a cedar type and whether they stain it or paint it, uh, dark brown to blend in with the building. 
and some plantings in the front of the fence just to soften it so it doesn't look like this solid wall just got popped up in front. Um, and ADRC was, um, it, everyone that chimed in was unanimous. They concurred their thought process. They kind of went around a little bit and then they all kind of landed on the same spot. Uh, that's been shared with the owner and applicant and they are fine. They agree to put up the fence, whatever, whatever uh, mm -hmm. we would like to see. So they don't have an issue with the fence or the plantings, quite honestly, what they're gonna do is some of these plantings are just gonna get Shift, yeah. shifted and reinstalled and hopefully survive. And if not, then they'll put some other ones in. Um, these units here, the top of these units are about 42 inches. Um, this rhododendron is right, you know, kind of at 40 inches. Um, the, uh, uh, so the top of the generator is going to be at about 40, 48 and, uh, 54 inches. Roughly. Like tall as the sign or maybe uh, shorter? Uh, probably about the sign. Yep. So about mm -hmm. six, six to eight inches taller than what we're seeing here. Okay. So. All right. Uh, commissioners, any concerns with what Shannon described and what? A D R C recommended. So, um, just so, I'm just, I'm just going to, uh, so what I'm looking for, just, uh, and again, I apologize, yeah, um, Madam Chair. Um, again, this is a building permit that's in front of me. So if, if the commission concurs with the screening and the recommendation and doesn't need any further information, then you can give me permission to just proceed with the building permit um, as discussed or if there's other information or concerns the commission has, you can request this come in under site plan review for your review. That's that's the question you. before yeah. you. Sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, just a, a oh, quick ahead, clarifying question. Mm -hmm. This is Liz. Um, my clarifying question, are we talking a five foot fence, six foot fence? What, what would that size be? So we're looking to put the fence up just high enough so that it screens the uh, it screens the unit. So four four and a half feet. They might okay. do a little bit of a berm. So I don't want something huge up there unnecessarily. I want it uh -huh. just tall enough so that we're not seeing the unit, um, and so that the shrubs will kind of also kind of blend in with everything as well. Okay, that sounds very reasonable. Anyone else? Looks like you have your approval. I, I hope, I don't know what the board on board is. Hopefully stronger than a lattice. Sometimes you see those things just, just oh, they yeah, look like a hot mess. The lattice. So rather than a stockade, so the stockade oh. fence, the, the, the pickets are all on one side, yeah. right? And all butt up to one another and the rails are all behind. Uh, board on board, you've got the rails. And there's one board on the front and oh, one board okay. on the okay. back. Got it. And one, okay. So kind of like a, some people call it a shadow box yep. fence so that it just provides a little bit of different yep. relief and interest. Yeah. A um, little bit of airflow. So. Um, Sounds lovely. Okay. All right. Thank I will you, proceed Shannon. accordingly. Thank you. Okay. Next item up. Zoning training or land use training. Um, so for those of you that had the uh, opportunity to respond to the doodle poll. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, that. Uh, based on the response, both from I, I had TPZ, ZBA, and Inland Wetlands on that email, um, based on the response, we've landed on March 29th from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, as I noted in my email to you, this is now a new we, this is something that the town of Farmington has done anyway, typically when we have uh, after the elections and we have new uh, board and commission members that come on. Um, so this really isn't new for us. Uh, what is new is that it's now a requirement by the state of Connecticut uh, that it be done every two years and there are, are some specific elements that they'll be looking for that we complete and there to be four hours in total. The intent is that this is going to kind of cover uh, general ethics and protocols, a little bit of Robin, uh, Robert's rules of order for meetings, 
um, proper procedures and about when to recuse yourself, uh, social media protocols, um, and how to hold, basically how to hold a proper uh, meeting. And Bob DeCrescenzo, our land use attorney, is putting that together. There will be a subsequent, we'll have to do a follow-up one at some point, um, perhaps in the fall. Uh, there's one about um, affordable. Site, affordable housing that needs to be done as well. So there are a few things that need to, to be done, but this is at least the step one. And um, I think one, it's a great refresher for, for everyone and it should be uh, useful for our, our new members as well. Thank you. And, uh, and it's a Zoom. It's a Zoom. Okay. And so I sent out the Outlook invite uh, this afternoon to everyone. So for those of you that use Outlook or a Google Calendar that'll take that in, it's there so that you've got it as a placeholder in your calendars. Um, and then I'll be working on a, on the Zoom invites in the next couple of days. I may enlist Sandy's help in getting everybody loaded into Zoom. Uh, so you'll be getting uh, panelist invites and we'll hold it as a webinar so that um, yeah, it's gonna be, you can interact with Bob and um, you know, do questions and whatnot. I think you're, you'll find it informative, hopefully. So well, are there any, any questions about that? Are we all, all good? All good, seeing heads nodding and all good. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna keep on moving. Um, In-person meetings. Uh, we met with our IT staff last week and at the time I wrote this, we were like, okay, we think we got everything in place. And Garrett and I had our Unionville Historic District meeting last Thursday evening, and Garrett discovered that we've got a hiccup with the IT approach for an in-person meeting. So um, it really for a hybrid meeting, okay. right? It's to, in um, IT has gone, has done really a lot of work since we last tried this. Um, last summer with wetlands and ZBA, but it's geared really to town council and town council operates very differently than our land use commissions. And we we rely more heavily on presentations and presentation boards and there's more speakers and a little more interaction as opposed to a regimented um, role of business mm -hmm. per se that town council goes through. So with that and with the potential um, like for our Unionville Historic District Commission, and for, as an example, our chair is currently out of state. So the way it was gonna get set up is you wouldn't actually see any of Zoom on the council chamber video. Mm -hmm. It was just going to be the presentation. So anyone calling in from outside, you wouldn't see them on the screen. So, that would be a problem for even a present, you know, for sure. presenter or for anyone. So we need to be able to see that individual, whoever is calling, we need to be able to see them. So, so we're close, but we're not quite there yet. Okay. So, so. we found, we found a little hiccup. Um, so we're probably gonna, you know, it, I would say not for March 21st, possibly April 11th or the April 25th meeting. And commissioners, whatever the decision is, the commissioners have to be in person, correct? Uh, so the, correct. So the whole point of this is that the commissioner, is, so the, the idea is that everybody's in person and the hybrid is left for the public, um, their convenience, and anyone that has an extenuating circumstance that comes up, like all of a sudden, you know, whatever, a, a spouse has a meeting that's out of state and you're okay, what are we doing with the kids? And they're like, all right, I really got to take mine from home. You know, there's things, somebody has the sniffles and you can't leave them, whatever it is, like there's going to be those things, but it's, it's those type of one-off situations that I had every intention of being in, per, in person, but this situation mm -hmm. presented itself and so Zoom is allowing you to participate in person rather than having to miss the meeting entirely. Uh, for our applicants, a, a lot of them have gotten used to juggling and taking two meetings in one evening. So if they've got a, like an engineer or an architect that has to 
present for two meetings that will allow them to to do that to be on ours at seven o'clock and mm -hmm. you know in Stanford at eight o'clock right that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do that unless uh zoom right. so I'm wondering with the April 11 that uh with the three public hearings would you just let this process continue uh we can we can yep it just yeah I already have a headache coming on for April 11th. <laughs> I don't know if I can be here. Scott, you hear that? We have, we've got uh, we've got three hearings. You. We've got three hearings on the 21st as well. So there's we've got three on the 21st and three on the 11th. So I would agree starting hybrid probably isn't uh, yeah. that, you know, we wouldn't do that on the night where we've got three hearings set, but yeah. So probably April 25th, maybe the first okay. of May. But at some point we've got to yes. rip the band-aid off and give it a shot. And um and it is what it is so but that's the the update we were close but we did um the and staff intends to do a couple of dry runs ourselves um but it's always i don't know mm -hmm. what it is it's always different at seven o'clock when you go to go live yeah <laughs> so but anyhow we're uh we're chipping away at it with the intent to uh with the intent to get there all right okay sounds good thank you okay anyone um commissioners have questions for shannon so, so just quick on, so the hiccup is if you're calling into Zoom, it's it's essentially audio only because you can't see what's on the projector screen in the room. Um, you could see it if you were on a laptop, you'll see it. it's the way that the projector screen is having to be utilized. Um, and it, it interestingly, when we put it on, because we have um, a set, uh, another set of computers in an AV room that's immediately behind the screen. And so we're logged into Zoom there, but when you logged into the computer, uh, the chambers, the chambers yeah. it did this weird, like it kept mm -hmm. trying to search for itself. It was like reprojecting its image on itself. And so it became this weird disappearing image mm -hmm. because it was trying to project itself on itself. So, um, so we once we took the projector, the the AV screen and the chambers off Zoom, it worked fine. But it was after that we we're like, okay, well we solved that problem and we went about our our business. And like I said, it was when we were on the meeting that that evening. That we real that uh, Garrett actually realizes. Wait a minute! If we do that, then we're not going to see the folks that are calling in. So we're going to just have to get a different workaround. And again, some of it is is our IT staff needs to understand and think about it a little differently because they've got it set up for town council, which is obviously important. It runs our whole town government, but it's thinking about it differently and understanding how we utilize this technology differently than um town council does so we're you know, just take a little bit of yeah. tweaking we're close and they've done a lot of there's a huge improvements from last fall so okay. yeah thank you yep. Any, anything else anyone we're good i was going to ask you about the parking lot again it looks great is it coming soon uh this is the commuter parking lot Oh, oh, over, I, uh, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can you not hit my mind by now? Jeez. Oh, oh, sure. <laughs> uh, I gotta work so here. The parking lot, the commuter lot yes. off of Route 6. Yes. I don't have a time for that. I can ask for us. It I, looks I, you know, awesome. It yeah. does look yeah. I don't understand why it's not mm -hmm. online, but I don't, I don't know if there's gates or things perhaps that are still needed. Okay. And it could be just waiting. I mean, if they're waiting for things like that and materials, because I don't know if they've got to pay. Okay. Like if they're pay stations and things that have to be installed, then okay. it, could be, it could be a bit if they're waiting on back ordered things. Right. But yeah, I can check in. He might have some intel on that. Okay, so I, it sounds like everyone is all set. So uh, it's 9.04, yay. Meeting is adjourned. No, Thanks. Uh, meeting minutes. No, oh, meeting minutes. minutes. Oh my God, no. <laughs> oh, so okay. close. Real quick, who wants to uh, make a motion to approve and second the uh, last meeting minutes? All right, uh, Patrick Carrier, I make a motion to approve the minutes of the Febu February 23rd, 2022 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. So, oh, second. <laughs> this is Liz. I second it. Thank you. All right. Now, it's still 904.
All right, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. We didn't vote. All right. Well, good night, everybody. <laughs> Wait, everyone was supposed to vote. Good night, everybody. Okay. We're good. Good night. Okay. <laughs>